What's going on everyone? Bruce here from Medieval Collectibles and I am very excited about the sword before us today. This is an iconic sword from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. In my opinion, second only to Bilbo's sword Sting. This is Andoril, Flame of the West, forged from the Shards of Narsil. This is a fully functional, hand-forged weapon made by Dark Sword Armory, loosely based on the sword created by Weta Workshop for the film Return of the King. And when I say fully functional, I mean it. This sword measures in at a little over 48 inches long and weighs just about 4 pounds. The 5160 high carbon steel blade is 36 inches long and has been fully tempered and dual hardened. The runes going down the fuller of the blade have been etched out on both sides. The steel crossguard is 10 inches wide and has been hammered and machined to the proper shape. The grip and pommel, also forged from steel, make up the last 11 inches of the weapon. The first 4.5 inches of the grip here have been wrapped in leather. I always loved the hollow curve on the pommel and quillions of the hero sword, and I can tell they've gone to great effort to get it right. The point of balance from the guard is about 4 inches which makes for a balanced weapon that is very easy to wield. I should mention that this sword is made to be practical and hardy, so its finish, being hammered and hand forged, can sometimes feature marks from the forging process. Essentially, a hand forged weapon is going to look hand forged, and you should expect it to. I do want to talk about the history of this sword within the world of Lord of the Rings, but before we do that, why don't we see this bad boy in action? We can't talk about Anduril without first talking about Narsil, the sword from which Anduril was made. Narsil, which means red and white flame in Elvish, was forged by the dwarf Telkar of Nogrod during the First Age. The next time we really hear about it in the Silmarillion is when Elendil, father of Asildur, left Numenor with it and escaped to Middle-earth before Numenor was destroyed by the Valar. If you haven't read the Silmarillion, what I just said won't have made any sense, so I do apologize. So. How old were the shards of Narsil before they were reforged into Anduril? Well, we know Narsil was forged at some point in the First Age, but since we don't know when exactly, let's not even include it. The Second Age came and went, and the end of Return of the King marks the end of the Third Age. The Second Age lasted 3,441 years, and the Third Age lasted 3,021 years, which would make the shards of Narsil no less than 6,462 years old by the time it was reforged, and that's not even including the unknown years of the First Age. The runes that run down the sword are in the Tengwar script, and the language is Quenya, which is an Elvish language. In Elvish, it reads Anar, Nanye Andoril ine Narsili Masilindilo, Lersuvantini Moli Modrio, Isil. In the common tongue, this translates to Sun. I am Andoril, which was Narsil, the sword of Elindil. They will flee from me, the thralls of Mordor, Moon. The Anduril sword also comes with this formed leather scabbard and belt for not only carrying the sword, but also protecting the blade when not in use. This sword has been an absolute delight to review, and the folks over at Dark Sword Armory have made this Lord of the Rings fanboy very happy. If you are a collector of decorative swords or prop replica swords from TV and movies, a functional replica like this is your next logical step. After spending weeks of my young adult life watching the Weta Workshop features from Lord of the Rings DVDs, I can honestly say that this is the next best thing to owning the hero sword that Viggo Mortensen used in his close-up shots. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the Medieval Collectibles YouTube channel to stay up to date on videos just like this one. We'll see you next time.